Um, John, I can see you. John Cross, if you'd like to kick us off. Yeah, ha happy to. Thanks, Matt. Uh, uh, hi, Jürgen. I just wonder whether I could get okay. your thoughts generally on the game. And there were some key decisions, which I was... Uh, it's probably not appropriate to ask you as the first question, but um, but uh, can you can you talk us through the key decisions really? Um, uh, sort of the Harry Kane uh, challenge on Robertson, yeah. Robertson's challenge on uh, Royale, and then the penalty decision. Uh, they they all looked from where I was sitting as if you know questionable highly. <laughs> yeah, so the, let's start with the result. Maybe the result I think is 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 fine. Um, would have been different, I think, um, with with different decisions from the ref. But with the decisions, how he did it, I'm fine with the result. It's a 2-2 at Tottenham. That's absolutely okay. It was a difficult game for us for, for plenty of reasons. One is uh, uh, we had to change a lot. Um, um, and it obviously is then difficult to... To deal with the different challenges in a game like this, the challenge today was we play against Tottenham, who set up a 5-3-2. Um, and when they won the ball deep in their own half, they just kicked it as far as possible and Kane and Son were on their bikes for it. So we struggle with these moments slightly. That costs you, obviously, like... <laughs> It gives you some struggles a little bit because you think each ball we lose is probably um, so we had to reorganize our protection a little bit better in the second half that we don't run always in a counter attack that, that makes no sense that Ibu Kunate is um, involved in our offensive passing and Tyler Morton is the one who stands against Harry Kane that's not really how it should be so that's a the, the football part was intense game. Looked Tottenham looked second half slightly fresher than us. Um, we have a two one up. They could then score the second as well. Um, but of course, the game would have been completely different with two key decisions in the first half. So let's start with Robo. We we saw it now back, and yes, you can give a red card there. It's not the harshest um, ever, but it's not the smartest as well. So he knows that and. Um, uh, He's a he's a really good boy, but he lost it a little bit, and um, so this red card you can give. Um, but this is the proof that the VR was there today because um, before that we thought he might not be in in his in, in his office because the two city the two other situations. Um, I think we agree now all that Harry Kane should have seen a red card, so and he didn't, and. The penalty situation, Mr. Tierney told me that he thought Diogo Chota stopped on purpose. He wanted to get hit. And if you watch the situation back, that's a very exclusive view. Um, and it's really difficult um, to do these things that quick. But he has, I'm not sure why he, so you must, it was a very quick decision of him. You could see it, he saw, he saw it, it was right, directly like this. I'm not sure if he was prepared for it or whatever, but if you watch the situation, how can you react that quick? It's a clear penalty, but he thought it's clear not the penalty. Wow. Um, yeah, that's obviously two wrong decisions of him, I would say, and one right, all three against us. Thanks, John. We'll go to Matt Law and then James Pierce. Hi, Jürgen. Um Matt. Can I just ask you, in, with the Harry Kane situation, do you think it benefits Harry that he is the England captain when these things happen? I don't. I have no idea. Why? Why? why. Really, you have to ask, not me. You have to ask. Yeah. The VAR. That's a. That's a clear, absolutely one hundred percent red card. You, you're very often you don't see it. One, you cannot see it clearly or whatever. And but this situation, if if Andy Robertson's foot is still on the ground. This leg is broken. I think we all agree on that. But luckily for both, it was in the air. It's still a red card. But um, the ref saw it different. Thank you. James Pierce, and then to Jerry Cox. James. Hi, Jürgen. Hi, Jürgen. Can I just check? How, how difficult is it trying to prepare the team at the moment with everything you're having to handle because obviously you had to make late changes before the Newcastle game. I take it those were late changes again today. So is, is that two games you've got into when you haven't even trained with that starting 11? Yeah, true. Yeah, Hendo has a cold. Hendo is, is the only with proper symptoms, but he is only a cold. Um, 
and we had to send him home. Um, yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy. Um, we have, so we, well, we always were in contact, in contact with the Premier League and we tell them uh, our, about our cases and the stuff what happens. And we had, in the first, in the first instant, we had three cases. Uh, then two days later, Thiago was positive. That is, um, the Premier League tells us that these are pretty much the best numbers. Uh, in the in the league, um, I saw Arsenal playing and Chelsea playing. They have obviously, um, for me, their first lineup <laughs> pretty much on, on the pitch. Um, for us, that's not exactly the same um, possible. Um, so, but yeah, there was obviously no chance with um, with four yesterday to 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 um, cancel a game, and we had no we had no intention to do that. Um, but um, then today, handle on top of that for different reasons. Yes, it's tough, absolutely tough. And they play against Tottenham, and you saw um, they looked in the second half fresher than, this, than the first half. So this is an intense period. We have to make sure that we all have the same um, chances, the same situation, pretty much. It's difficult in that moment. I, I, I see that. Um, but um, we had no, apart from, I don't know which team I can line up because I always wait more in the morning for the, for the test results. Um, but um, we had absolutely no idea about the Tottenham team. Usually you prepare a game and you have an idea who played last week and stuff like this. We had absolutely no idea. And we saw then the lineup was, I think, apart from Heuberg, um, pretty much the first um, uh, the first lineup. So, um, and they were all, looked already fresh, to be honest. We were first half just better and um, did or played very well dominant. I'm not sure the numbers, but it's 70, 30 percent at Tottenham. That's now really, it's nearly ridiculous to be honest. Uh, there's no open game. It's just counterattacking. So that's all tough. But yes, the situation is not easy. But um, we play football as long as people tell us to. Okay, got time for a couple more. We'll go to Jerry Cox and then to uh, Zia. Uh, so uh, Jerry first. Hi, Jurgen. Um, it, it's been suggested there could be a circuit breaker to stop the Premier League for a week or two. What would you feel? I don't know. If somebody tells me that's the solution, I'm, I'm in on 100%. The only thing that I might really, I mean, so for, for us, it looks like we got the, so the, the stuff, we have in a moment no case in the stuff. So no case that on the stuff got the booster. Um, I don't know exactly, but five, six weeks ago. So let's just guess now that there's, that's because of the players got the booster. Um, most of the players got the booster if they could get it after the Aston Villa game. So five, six days later, they still got um, then Corona. Two of them had the booster already. The other two couldn't get it because they had a, got a different injection before, not a vaccination for something else. And so they couldn't get the booster. So that's it. Um, if everybody gets boosted and we have to go two weeks to home and it's really the solution and then we don't have cases, well, fine, then let's go home and, and, and wait for that. Absolutely. But if we just stop it and, and don't do anything in that department, um, then I don't see the benefit of it, really. Thank you. Final question, I'm afraid, but it's all got to go. Zia. Um, hi, Jürgen. Now, um, I understand 25% of the Premier League clubs have not been vaccinated so far. Now, do you think clubs can actually do more to influence the players to be vaccinated? I don't know these numbers, honestly. It was like EFL, I heard something about that, but I, didn't, I don't know the numbers. I have no idea. It's not about, I know, um, it's not about that we have to force players to do it, but we, it's always when you want to be part, when you want to be a member of a club, whichever club it is, then you have to follow the rules of the club. If we say the Premier League is a specific club um, and, and you want to be part of it, then the Premier League can say you have to do this and that. So I'm not allowed to say exactly what I want about the ref today, otherwise I get a fine. Um, so I have to. I have to accept this rule, and that's there are some more rules. So, but I I, I don't know really. I cannot be always. Uh, I don't want to be the spokesperson for whatever vaccination or, or other things. It's really I think from a common sense point of view, it makes absolutely sense to do it because we help us and other people. Um, but 
that, that's yeah. It will not my 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 opinion will not be decisive tomorrow in the meeting. Never was. Why should it be now? Thank you, guys. Stay safe. Thank you very much. All the best.